Hi everyone, welcome to Imaging Study. Today we are going to see a case of polycystic ovarian disease with nebothian cysts. A 23 years old married female patient came with irregular scanty menstruation, subfertility, obesity, and hirsutism. She had a history of irregular scanty menstruation since menarche. Let's see what we have got on ultrasound. Here you can see the longitudinal section of the uterus. You can see multiple well-defined anechoic cystic spaces at the cervical myometrium casting posterior acoustic enhancements. These tiny cystic spaces are nebothian cysts. The uterus is normal in size and the central endometrial echo looks quite normal. Here is the measurement and uterus is not bulky. You can see this tiny nebothian cysts here. This is the transverse section and the endometrial thickness is within normal limit. This is the cervical region and you can see these cystic spaces quite well visualized here. And the picture of the longitudinal section of the uterus and you can see nebothian cysts here. Here is the measurement of the nebothian cyst. If you magnify the image then you can see many more of them here. Again, the picture of the cervical nebothian cysts in transverse section. Now, let's jump into the ovary. You can see this is the right ovary, which is enlarged in size. There are multiple tiny follicles, more than 10 in number, seen at the periphery of the ovary, forming the polysting or necklace pattern. There is no dominant follicle here. You can see the ovarian stroma looks quite brighter. Here is the picture of the ovary and you can see this polystring appearance with increased stromal ecogenicity. We have measured the volume and it is around 21 cc. Here is again the picture and you can't see any dominant follicle at the time of a scan. Now let's look at the left one. This is also enlarged but not as much as the right one. You also can see multiple tiny cystic spaces at the peripheral part with increased stromal ecogenicity. Here is the picture of this left ovary and no dominant follicle is seen here also. Now when we are getting the measurement, make sure this measurement may not be 100% accurate if you compare with my last picture. However, it is showing 8.6 cc volume. I have another polycystic ovarian disease video on my YouTube channel where one ovarian volume was around 9cc and a lot of you have asked me about why I have told that ovary to be a point for polycystic ovarian disease as a lot of books say that ovarian volume should be more than 10cc. In my practice, I have seen a lot of patients having polycystic ovarian disease proven with follicle stimulating and luteinizing hormone assay having both ovarian volume around 8 to 9cc. In reproductive ages, in your one menstrual cycle, one ovary may get enlarged in size due to physiological process, but another ovary should stay in a normal size. But when both are getting enlarged more than 8 cc, then you should think of something abnormal. Here in this patient, you are seeing one ovary with 21 cc volume and another one with 8.6 cc. So there is an enlargement, but it is disproportionate. The main factor which is making this type of confusion to you is possibly the treatment. This patient is receiving treatment for long-term polycystic ovarian disease. So when the patient is getting treatment, make sure all the features that you have read on your book may not be present and expect some variations there. I have seen a few cases, I will upload it here obviously in recent days, that patient may come to you with a dominant follicle in case of PCOD. If you say that no, this can't be a PCOD, then you have to understand that this dominant follicle has came because your clinician is trying to treat the patient. So in summary, bilateral enlarged ovaries with multiple peripherally placed tiny follicles without any dominant follicle is seen forming the pearl string appearance. The ovarian stroma appears echogenic. Multiple small well-defined round to oval anechoic cystic structures of variable size casting posterior acoustic enhancements are seen within the cervical myometrium. So this feature suggests it as a case of polycystic ovarian disease with cervical nebothian cysts. 
Now the take home message. In case of bilateral enlarged ovaries with the absence of dominant follicle, consider polycystic ovarian disease first. If the patient is on treatment, then the features may vary a little from what you have read on your book. Thank you for watching this video. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for more. See you on the next one. Have a nice day.